and kids. Hey, we're outside riding bikes and we cannot wait for episode nine. So me and the Cotton Kids are here to say, let's get started. We're gonna hear some stories from Mr. Drew. We're gonna sing some songs with Miss Jeannie and the boys and Mr. Drew. Some hand motions with Miss Lauren, right? And then our catechism time with Miss Sarah. It's so good. Yeah. Are right, you guys ready to get started? Yeah. 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 Let's get started. Let's go. Hey. <gasps> hey, welcome to catechism time, Miss Missouri. Oh, I forgot something. Just a second. Wow, that's embarrassing. I forgot my hair. Oh, the mosquitoes are biting. Those mean mosquitoes. Okay. Now we're ready. <gasps> welcome to catechism, Miss Missouri. Do you see the other tree house? There it is. Okay, my hair is blocking your view there. Okay. So this time, we are going to talk about questions 16, 17, and 18. What is that? Oh, mosquitoes. What is that about? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So these are all about Adam and Eve. And, and it asks these questions in a funny way, in a way. Because, um, well, question 16 is who were our first parents. And you're like, well, my parents are mom and dad. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, it's just a funny way of saying the first two people. Um, so they're not really your parents, like not like mom and dad. Anyway, so who were our first parents? Or yeah, who were our first parents? And the answer is Adam and Eve. Oh, okay, question 17 is, how did God create man? And you're like, cause I don't know. How did God create man? The answer is God created man, male and female, after his own image. All right, and question 18. Did you hear that? I'm slapping mosquitoes. Question 18 is, of what were our first parents made? That's a funny question. And it's hard to say, of what were our first parents made? And the answer is, God made Adam's body out of the ground... I'm looking at the ground, out of the ground. And Eve's body out of a rib from Adam. Have you ever eaten ribs, like some pork ribs and some beef ribs and there's that bone? <gasps> That's a rib. So just for point of reference. So of what were our first parents made? God made Adam's body out of the ground and Eve's body out of a rib from Adam. Boom, there you go. That's question 16, 17, 18. Maybe in the tree house, we're gonna do some dancing. Or should we dance here? No, mosquitoes are killing me. We're gonna move for our, for our to do the song. You'll be awesome. Oh, I made it up the stairs. Okay, remember questions 16, 17, and 18. Let's see if I have us queued up right. Let's see if I get tongue twisted. I don't think that's the right spot. Oh, first parents, Adam and Eve. How did God create them? God created man. And him to me, after his own image. What were our first parents made? God created his body out of the ground. And Eve's body out of a rib from Adam. Very nice. Did you notice? I can't get the words out. Let me, let's give Miss Sarah one more chance. I'm going to blame it on mosquitoes. Can I get away with blaming it on mosquitoes? Who were our first parents, Adam and Eve? How did God create man? God created man, male and female, after his own image. What were our first parents made? How did he have a body out of the ground? And his body out of a rib from Adam. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for another chance. I hope you took that chance, too, to try it again and do fabulously. This is the end of Catechism with Miss Sarah for this time. Practice, practice. You can always rewind. Ask to watch an episode. I bet you your parents might say yes, you know. Like if you've maxed out your scream time, but you're like, oh, but I need to practice my catechism. Maybe my scripture memory song. You gotta let me watch that Haven Kids at Home stuff. Love you guys. Bye. Hi, Haven Kids. Hi, Haven Kids. Hi, Haven Kids. Hi, Haven Kids. <laughs> From my, our dinosaur family to yours. Here is Christ dead. is enough. Christ is my reward. All my
Hi, I'm Treehouse. It's Isabella, and we have a new memory verse. It's called John 3:16, and the memory um, and the hand motions are a heart and clapping two times after every verse. God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. John 3.16. There you go. Bye, guys. God loved the world so much. Yay! Dun, 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 uh, you're probably wondering, was Mr. Drew really just playing with toys? No, I was not. You know, this reminds me of a story. And it's a story about God's amazing plan and how to break down big, cold stone walls. If you have your Bible, Go ahead and turn with me to the sixth book of the Bible. That's right, we're in Joshua. Over the past few weeks, we went from Genesis, right, the first book, we were in Exodus, and then we're gonna skip over Leviticus, we're gonna skip over Numbers, we're gonna skip over Deuteronomy, and land in Joshua. Quick side note, do you know the name of the first five books of the Bible? First five books of the Bible? Now you can stump your parents with this one. But the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. Say it. Pentateuch. Pentateuch. It's a cool word, right? Well, here we are in Joshua. Can you guess what the book of Joshua is about? Or more importantly, who the book of Joshua is about? It's about God. Ha, I tricked you. Yes, I know it's about Joshua, but it's also about God. Before we dive into our story of Joshua, let's talk about last week's story. What happened? Do y'all remember? Well, we talked about Moses. We talked about the Hebrews. And remember how God gave them good food and good water while they were camping out in the wilderness? Well, God used this time to teach the Hebrews that he was capable of doing amazing things that he was a good God, and he could be trusted with their lives. But guess what? God's special people had trouble trusting God and doing what he commanded. And when I say that they had trouble, I mean that it was impossible, impossible for them to trust God and do as he asked. But God was not surprised. You see, God knows everyone's most secret thoughts, and feelings. And he knew that because Adam and Eve, remember those guys back in Genesis in the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve, he knew that because Adam and Eve disobeyed him, that every human after them couldn't obey God on their own. It was as though their thoughts and their feelings and their entire being were stuck behind giant stone walls they couldn't get out and that was the one thing that they needed the most and god needed to teach his special people that the only way they could love and trust him was if god would tear down the giant cold stone walls around their hearts so god led the people in the wilderness for 40 years provided for them every single day and god told them that when their children grew up that he had a special place for them and that he would be their king. So after 40 years of camping. 40 years. That's, that's a lot of s'mores. That's a lot of s'mores. So after 40 years of camping, the people who saw God rescue them from Pharaoh, they got old and died. Moses, who led the people, he got old and died. But before that, Moses appointed someone else to take his place to lead the people. And that new leader was Joshua. 
And the one thing the Bible says about Joshua is that he loved God. And God told Joshua and the Hebrews that they were going to go into a land that he had promised. And their first step was that they would defeat a whole city. And this whole city was fortified by giant walls. And the children, they heard stories about God saving them from Pharaoh, but they'd never been into battle. They were just campers. They weren't ninjas. They weren't Jedi. So there was a lot of doubt amongst them, right? But God told Joshua that he promised to give the city to his special people. God could easily have smashed the city to bits by his own will, but God still wanted to teach the people to trust him. God told Joshua that he and the Hebrews were going to defeat the city of Jericho. So that was the name of the city, Jericho. And they were going to defeat Jericho in a very odd way, not with swords, uh, not with lightsabers. Can't go into battle without lightsabers. They were going to defeat the city of Jericho with shouts and trumpet blasts. You know, trumpet like the... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, that one. Joshua trusted God. So God told the Hebrews to walk around the giant cold stone walls of the city for, get this, for seven days. They were going to do laps around the city for seven days. And on the seventh day, after walking, the last day, on the seventh lap around, they were to shout and praise God. Joshua and the Hebrews, they did exactly that. And guess what happened? The stone walls, they crashed down. That's crazy, isn't it? After the walls came down, the Hebrews, they took the city. They had captured the first city in the land of God because they loved God and trusted that what God said was true and that he could do amazing things. What happened? I thought you said it was impossible for people to obey God and to trust God. But Joshua obeyed God. But here's the thing. Only God can change their hearts. God changed Joshua and some of the children in the desert so that they could trust God. They weren't perfect, no. But God had smashed the walls of Joshua's heart. And his true promises, just like the shouts and trumpet blasts, caused the walls of Jericho to crash down. The only way that any of us can ever trust God and love God is by taking our hearts that are like the walls of Jericho and giving us a new heart that cares for God and cares for people. Think about it. God gives us the one thing we need but can't get on our own. Only he is capable of smashing down the walls, not only of the city of Jericho, but also the walls of our heart. He can do amazing things. Pretty cool, huh? Well, <laughs> I'm going to get back to this guy. And somehow he's going to be able to climb these walls and smash down the walls of this couch. Yes, I'm playing with toys. All right, get over it. Bye, guys. Wow, that was such a great time. That was so cool, right, kids? Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for coming to this episode. And we cannot wait till next week when we do episode 10 together. And you know what? There's even more fun to be had with you and your family. So go to havenkatie.com slash hkhome for this week's craft lesson and lots of different fun things. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye.